Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Dr. Taraya M. Richmond, PLLC. When it comes to your family's health and women's services, and you're looking for excellence in healthcare, look no further than your family medicine physician, Dr. Taraya M. Richmond, PLLC. Call Dr. Richmond today at 713-453-6962 to schedule your next appointment. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertiseatthesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. and welcome back to Docs. My name is Dr. Simone Ellis and I'm super excited to be here today. Of course, this is our show where we're educating, empowering, and inspiring you guys about education for dentist, no, excuse me, for doctors. And I am your host, Dr. Simone Ellis. Of course, you can find me on Facebook at Simone Ellis or on Instagram at Dr. Simone Ellis. And of course, my dental practice at Smile Design Studios located at 6130 Highway 6 in Missouri City, Texas. Of course, I'm looking for new patients. And my lovely co-host today is unfortunately not here. She'll be giving birth to a baby girl here at any time now. So we're excited to be excited to meet Quinn. But of course, this is you're running the show with me by myself today. So bear with me, guys. <laughs> On Today, we are going to be talking about domestic violence and its impact overall across several different platforms. So I am excited to have on our show today, Mr. Clinton Patton. Thank you so much for joining me today via Skype. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I can't uh, complain. So you guys, you got the, yeah, we see you got the beard gang going on. Is that November, like no shave November? Is that what we're doing or is that just a part of who you are? This, I mean, you know, ever since I found out that the ladies like the beards. Ladies you know, love the beards. I'm a hat. <laughs> you know, it just happened to fall in no say in November. That's what, that's what we're doing in Oklahoma with the beards, huh? Yeah, yeah, we make we're rocking. <laughs> well, tell me a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Um, let's get your credentials going. So who are you? Who is Mr. Clinton Patton? Well, I am a, an author. I'm a licensed professional counselor. And I'm a motivational speaker. Um I began speaking uh, in the effort to end domestic violence in 2007. I lost my sister to the uh, domestic violence, so she was murdered by my boyfriend. So um, I remember going through the, um, the, the the grief, which is very difficult. So I told myself that I would make it more. I wanted to be a, more of a instead of being a problem by being upset and you know violent. I wanted to be a solution. So I decided I wanted to make sure that I didn't, that I did what I needed to do to make sure no one else had to lose a sister, a mother, you know, to this senseless act of violence. Wow, that's pretty deep. So tell me a little bit about that story. How, how did that impact you? Or how did you find out about that when it happened? Well, um, August, it was like, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, August the... Um, 10, me and my sister was talking on the phone and um, I had just got back from playing basketball and I was at work because I, I was a mental health worker back then and she called and she was talking and during the midst of our conversation, she was like um, y'all, I'm so tired of what that boy do to me and I was asking her like, what do you mean? Uh, what are you talking about? She said, you just don't know what that boy do to me. And I was like, well, why don't you tell me what is he doing to you? So then the next sentence was, um, I told that boy, I get that gun. I don't know why he, that boy has that gun. And I was like, well, what, 
uh, has he been pulling the gun on you or is it something that you need to tell me? Do I need to come down there? But she was in Mississippi. And I was like, um, she said, no, nah, that boy ain't crazy. And then I was like, um, okay, well, you just let, hey, I could come down there. I'll take off work or whatever I got to do to, to get down there. So I was uh, going to Dallas because my cousin had graduated uh, college and we was having a party for her. And my sister was supposed to meet us down there, but she didn't. So like six o'clock Saturday, it was a Saturday and it was 11. She called and we talked and she was like, she was tired and she was going to sleep. So um, I told her that, you know, call me when you get up. Um, that, so the 12th, about four o'clock in the morning, I woke, well, I woke up and I heard crying in my dad's living room. And I was just like, well, what's going on? What, why is everybody crying? And then, you know, um, my sister's mom, which we have the, the same, we have uh, the same father, but a different mother. She was like, well, that, that boy killed your sister. And I was like, well, what do you mean killed my sister? Like, as in dead, like she's not hurt, you know, as in, you know, like not here anymore. And I can remember, I mean, just being angry. Like, I mean, I didn't understand it. I mean, I called her phone like several times. Because wow. I didn't believe it. Wow. That's that's heavy. And so we're going to be talking about today domestic violence and how we can, what are the signs? Because it sounds like there were signs there, but, you know, they weren't as prevalent. I mean, that's really a really deep story. So you decided to turn that negative into something positive and created your your organization. Tell us a little bit about how that evolved, because that place that you were in, I can imagine was a very dark space. Yeah. Um, patent Behavior Health. Um, I created that company because I have a passion for helping others. And it, within my passion, um, I decided, I knew at an early age that I was going to be a counselor. And I don't know how, but I just knew. I can remember sitting, you know, talking to my mother. Um, and I, I remember uh, we was in, this is when I was in Cleveland, we were sitting on the couch and it was this young young kid that got in trouble. He may have been my age or younger than me. And I looked, turned to my mom and I said, mom, that little boy needs, needs to have a mentor. So I knew that then, but then once I became older and I realized that um, it's more to what you see, then I became fascinated with studying human behaviors and um, in their response and tone and body language. And then once I became fascinated with that, then I wanted to be, I said, well, I need to open my own practice because I have a innovative way of uh, as a children and adolescents. And I also work with adults as well, but primarily children and adolescents. And as it relates to domestic violence, the only one of the ways that we can break that cycle is if we start uh, teaching and modeling healthy behaviors and that uh, for our children. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And so we're going to get into what is domestic violence. But before we get started, let me talk to you about this sponsored show. So this portion of the show is sponsored by Dr. Turia Richmond, PLLC. Find excellence in healthcare is no easy task. When you begin this journey, look no further than your local family medicine physician, Dr. Teria M. Richmond. Um, Dr. Richmond offers an array of services including pap smears, breast exams, STI screenings, contraceptive management, and prenatal care, and so much more. Call Dr. Richmond, PLLC, to schedule your next appointment today at 713-453-6962. I know the producer is going to kill me, but it's Teria, right? Sorry. So Dr. Teriah Richmond, I want to make sure that you guys check her out. Um, she's excellent, excellent doctor. And the phone number is 713-453-6962. So tell me a little bit about what is domestic violence? What, what is that? Well, it's often called intimate partner violence. Mm -hmm. However, it's when you have, um, family members who may become violent towards each other physically, um, uh, verbally, uh, financially. It could be, it doesn't have any type of 
a specific group that it target. It's like it could be mother and son. It could be father and son. It could be mother and father. It could be sister and brother. Um, it's pretty much where you have uh, individuals within the within the context of a relationship who become uh, verbally aggressive or uh, physically aggressive at some point in time in the relationship. And so what are the signs of that? So when do we realize that a joke or somebody playing a game or saying something mean is starting to turn into actual domestic violence? Um, domestic violence, the foundation of domestic violence is emotional abuse. It's going to be marked with name calling. It's going to be with marked with um, condescending behavior towards a person. It's going to be belittling. It's going to seem like they're going to make the person feel like they can't do anything right. Um, they're going to make them believe that uh, the abuse is uh, normal. They're going to... Um, it's a it's a substantial amount of manipulation that occurs within that uh, type of context of that type of relationship. So do um, you, that do you start seeing gonna, it pretty early on, or is it something that it just all of a sudden happens? Like, how would somebody know that they're in a domestic violence situation? It sounds like um, your sister, as you you stated earlier, you weren't even aware of it until kind of later on into it. So she did some, I guess, hiding of it. So what does that look like? I wasn't aware until uh, I had to go to Mississippi to bury her. I didn't know anything about it until after she's already dead. So get into so, the mind of the abuser. What are their triggers for domestic violence? Uh, first, uh, domestic violence is learned. It's an environmental, it's environmental, it's learned within the environment. Um, people and kids learn by modeling. So when you have a kid that is placed in an environment where there is domestic violence, you have one or two things that's going to happen. Either that child is going to be an abuser or that child will become abused wow. because they would think that that is appropriate. That is the appropriate lifestyle to, to take on. Um, as far as signs, um, you can look at jealousy is one of the, the, the number one signs. Uh, isolation. They want to isolate you for the thing from people that you care about. They want to keep you from doing the things that you are good at. They're going to, um, it's going to feel like an attack on your self-esteem. Um, it's going to feel like, um, of course, they're going to be, they're going to play fight. They're going to start play fighting when they start, when they, they're, they're going to, if they're going to make you believe that they're playing, but they're really, they really mean it. They're not they're, playing. They're not they're, playing fair, right? Yeah, they threaten you. They will threaten you. And what I say about threats is, if someone threatens to kill you, threats to harm you, you better believe them. Wow. Because those type of things are, are you don't wake up and say I want to be an abuser. You don't wake up and say, I want to um, harm someone who seems to be weaker than me. You know, you learn those behaviors in your environment. So can an abuser ever be satisfied or is it going to continually be an abusive situation? Um, like, they, is it like one person that's like, I hit you and I'm like, I'm never going to do that again. Or do you usually see that behavior continually happening in the future? Sounds like they're trying to abuse our time. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Oh, uh, again, sorry about that. I, I know that. that's no problem. So the question that was: Is that is an abuser ever, you know, satisfied? Or is that something that continues to keep happening throughout it's the course? Of it's going to be continuous because keep in mind when you're abusive, um, you don't you don't believe that it's a problem, and if you don't believe that it's a problem, it's not going to change. So right. I think it's difficult to proceed in a relationship with someone that you've already crossed those boundaries with. Because I think you already said that we model behavior, right? So if you're used to seeing that type of environment growing up, chances are you believe right. that that's normal. So the way that you interact with people, the way that you 
uh, respond to people is what you've seen, right? And so usually yeah. you don't see that there's anything wrong with that. So you right. also talked a little bit about, you know, the abuser, but tell us a little bit about the characteristics of a batterer. Actually, I have a, uh, I actually, I'm going to read a piece really quick. Okay. Hopefully. I'm going to read a piece real quick, and I hope this gives you all the information you need about them. It's called The Mind of a Batterer. Hey, we've never had a poetry reading on the doc show, but I love it. So we're about to do the snaps today. and everything. Let's come on. Yeah. Go with it. <laughs> but to have it today. Okay. <laughs> I destroy the fabric, the fabric of your nuclear family and your society. I am the killer that remains silent while taking your life drastically before you can recognize the identity of the force which is getting away with highway robbery. I contain no care about your ethnicity, stature, gender, support financially, sexuality, how you identify yourself physiologically, if you are a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, or any family member of any relation. I will get you where I need you to be, and that is afraid of me furiously. If you think that I can't get to you because you are more educated than me, then obviously you can't see me vigorously murder you emotionally and easily taking your soul intimately and rupturing your mentality. Yes, you are the one who is crazy and no one would believe anything you say about me. I am a thoughts that lead you to believe that I made God flee. I make you hate God. Why has he forsakenly forgotten about the carnage that has been caused by the devil in me? O oh, satanically, Father, thou art not heavenly. Honestly, I don't believe in honesty and such manipulation. I need you next to me infinitely, and I will lie unswervingly until you believe my lies with no sense of reality. I will control you furiously. I need you to believe that you are the only person who can save me from me. I will tear you down confidently. Oh, yeah, you confide in me. I see your vulnerability. I need you to believe that I can control the air you breathe convincingly with the goal of deceiving your soul substantially. You know when I call you the B word, it's because I love you, obviously, and I know that you can't pass my physicality. I am stronger than you genetically. I tell you over and over again, it won't happen again constantly, misleading you to believe that in the end, we will live happily. I destroy your life from my past, your future, and your kids' kids and their kids simultaneously. I care nothing about the damage that I caused your friends or family by abusing you relentlessly. I am the monster in the closet that your kids are terrified of nightly. They hear me violently in the next room teaching you to never disobey your master. But America taught us to domestically abuse thee with the institution of slavery. I guess this makes me a slave owner and now I have property, but you can't see it's all about me unapologetically. I will wipe out generations and generations single-handedly by placing graves where your mother and father is supposed to be. Consequently, I hit you so your bruises are unseen visibly by the naked eye intentionally. With each punch, kick, or, or slap I throw, I aim to knock your head off physically, financially, and, and mentally. I want you dead with no life, with no option of living lively. Your cry falls upon deaf ears loudly. You are sworn in forcefully to take an oath of secrecy. You better not tell anybody my business or I'll kill you and me. Me, but not really, just you viciously. You get no remorse from me. Now call the police on me. Watch how I finesse the situation and they will leave so willingly without questioning me bitterly. If I can't have you, no one can. And if you think that you can leave me, I will murder you passionately because you said that you would never stop loving me chaotically. This is this is not a threat. It's your reality. The games are for Milton Bradley. You will die before you leave me honestly. Then I just I turn the gun on me. I am like Ike Turner's actions according to what's love got to do with it. I am Lucius Lyons' actions off screen. Ask his ex-wife. And like when you hear on Friday... Debo riding the bi cycle of violence. You have the right to remain in silence. I am domestic violence. Wow. That is, 
that's intense. And I, that's we do the snaps. That's right, right. I, I was about to clap, but then I'm like, that's you know, intense. I appreciate, I appreciate but that's it. definitely the characteristics of a batterer. And so we don't even have to go any further <laughs> into that. You <laughs> described it all that well. So, <laughs> well, let me go. And this portion of the show is sponsored by The Sphere. Are you starting a business and looking for a place to advertise? And do you need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as in modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at thesphere.tv. So we just went into what domestic violence is and the signs and characteristics of a batterer. But let's talk a little bit about the socioeconomic impact and the financial impact that domestic abuse has on society. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, first and foremost, uh, here in the United States of America, we have over 900,000 incidents of domestic violence um, per year. Wow. I don't know. And so is that all, you, um, is that all from... I guess the list of ranges of the domestic violence that you were talking about. So is cyberbullying a part of that? Because I know now that's being considered yeah. a part of domestic violence. However, that doesn't account for the millions of the the millions of cases that are not reported. Okay. Um, but to put it in into to retrospect, Ohio State has a football stadium. The capacity of that football stadium is one hundred and four thousand. Imagine placing enough incidents of domestic violence to fill up nine of those stadiums. Wow. Wow. So, and, so that's gotta be a huge, I mean, that's huge. That's a huge impact. Say that again. I said, so that's a huge impact on the community, yes. like, because that's a lot of money that's being spent to fight those cases about domestic it's violence. Just, domestic violence itself costs us about $5.8 billion. Wow. A year. And $4.1 billion um, are due to lost wages because they can't go to work because of injuries due to domestic violence. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit more about that. So we have like the financial aspect where people can't get, they can't go to work because their abuse uh -huh. is so prevalent and, or, and physically. There's, uh, another part of domestic violence is financial abuse where I mean, you, you have your stay-at-home parents, stay-at-home uh, parents, whether it's mother or father, they don't have the means to get out. Um, that's another cost that they can't afford to get uh, medical treatment. That's another cost that you may have to have to cover. I mean, it's, it's so much. And then you think about the days the kids miss out of school. Mm. Um, really, by the, if you got your kids missing days out of school, are they learning? Do they get held back? Right. What time? job would they be able to um what type of job would they be able to secure once they get uh due to missing school right you know and so do you they, feel like the social economic um do you feel like social economics shield you from having domestic abuse um i think that we don't have enough funding to prevent it we don't have enough funding to uh we don't have enough funding for intervention as well Okay. And that's where I have, that's where I spend most of my uh, time is intervening. I understand that we have enough, we are aware of a problem. We've been aware for a long time. The first shelter was built in England in 1970. Wow. By Aaron Pease. And he has also, he's had a, a, I think it was the first book about domestic violence as well. This, it was called uh, Be Quiet or You'll Wake the Neighbors. So, um, so I, meaning, meaning if you're a higher earner, are you um, less likely to be a victim of domestic violence? Oh, when you recognize the signs and you're able to leave. I witnessed my mother as well in the domestic abuse relationship. Um, what I've learned from her was she had to leave the state in order to get away from her time. 
Right. And we had to leave the state. What about financially, though? If you're making more money, are you able to, I mean, are you more at risk to have domestic violence? Or do you see that people with a lower socioeconomic status are more, you know, exposed to uh, domestic abuse? The socioeconomic status has no, it, it doesn't matter. Domestic violence does not have a particular socioeconomic status, a particular sexuality, a particular gender. It does not care. Right. It's and like it, how people it, used to have this, this this saying about, you know, AIDS or HIV. Well, they don't look like they have HIV or they don't look right. like they have AIDS. But it's like, well, what does that look like? What does that appear? I mean, when you're walking down the street, but domestic violence, I mean, you can physically see that. So but you don't necessarily you know people that are stay at home moms are getting abused just as much as, you know, people who have low, um, low socioeconomics. So. What are some of the things that you feel like um, impact adolescents? Because you were talking a little bit about that and mm -hmm. the children in the educational environment. So them coming out of school, that's a big problem because now they're setting them up for failure with their fundamental stages, right? So they're not in school. They're not able to learn. So then it's having a big impact on them in different ways. What are some of the other things that we're seeing from the adolescent and children uh, viewpoint with um, domestic one, violence? One they lack uh, appropriate coping skills. They lack social skills as well. Um, they're your kids who, some of them are isolated. Some of them do not, um, they're isolated. Some of them suffer from, in fact, over 50% of children who witness domestic violence suffer from depression. Mm. They have suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideation uh, due to witnessing domestic violence. Um, they often, it's different in males and female children. Males tend to act out. They, the juvenile delinquency, uh, females turn to, female kid children tend to turn their anger inward. They are more prone to depression and, uh, bipolar and, uh, PTSD, which all of them are prone to it. But, um, you would see it more in a, a male child. Um, 3.3 to 10 million children witness domestic violence per year in the United States of America. Mm. That's you, a large number. That's a large number. And so is that becoming from, you know, like, I mean, why do you think that that number is so high? Is it that across the board, we're just not taught how to handle our emotions? Um, do you feel like from a racial standpoint, you know, certain races deal with more hostile environments than others? I think that the the... What I've learned over the years of uh, that I've been doing this work is we, in our society, we're not taught the definition or taught how to apply or comprehend love. We have, our society teaches us a uh, dysfunctional definition or dysfunctional ways that are supposed to be loved and, it's, and it isn't. So, um, expound upon that a little bit. So, what do you feel? How do you feel like society? I mean, how are we missing the mark? That's a really profound statement. So, we are missing the mark because, again, we have there's a difference between a male child and a man. And as long as we keep associating a, uh, Child, childish behavior with that of a man, then we're going to continue to miss the mark because we have, um, and I use man right now because, of course, there are more incidents of domestic violence that are where the man is per the perpetrator. Mm. However, those are not men; those are male children who are who have the attributes of a man. Okay. Um, a and a man is going to um, love you. Man's going to love himself. Um, a man is when I, I I also study, and when I went to uh, Corinthians, I went to you know most people when you talk about when you ask them what is love, they go directly to Corinthians uh, chapter thirteen verse four. Right, love, love is, is patient, love is kind. That's easy. That's easy. Anybody can say that. However, what I found is when I went to first 
Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, verse 11 is, when I was a child, I acted as a child, and thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away my child's ways. That told me that love is mature. And I know as a therapist, I could have someone who is, who may be, let's just say 25 chronologically, but mentally be like um, maybe five or six due to something traumatic that has happened to him or her. So until we are able to um, teach, each, teach well, until we're able to role play or teach our, our young men that it's okay to, to love, then we're going to continue to have this problem. Yeah, I completely agree. So this portion of the show is sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside their fears and to have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at kogpassions.com. That's K-O-G passions.com and use the code dope exclamation point for 10% off of your exclusive unleash your dopeness apparel act now sizes are selling out fast and I think you really hit the nail on the head with that where male children are really taught to become um, not to allow themselves to have feelings and so it's manifested in so many different ways as they become adults whereas when you see a male child crying you you typically see somebody trying to tell them man up stop crying don't feel that emotion and so then that suppresses that and then they get a little bit older and they want to be vulnerable and they can't because they don't know how to express those different emotions so then that just magnifies as they become an adult so when people are frustrated they don't know the proper ways to take out that frustration so instead of uh, keeping that self internally they start to show that outward is that what I'm hearing you say pretty much yes um, I see it time and time again especially within the black community um, why is that with us though why do you feel like it's so prevalent in the black community because I don't feel like I see that and it may be more hush hush maybe it's more of how media portrays black men so therefore we see it more but it seems like that is a problem that with black men especially like we don't allow them to have feelings and then when they do decide to have feelings it's some sort of like issue and so we don't teach our children that and so as they grow up to be men it becomes a problem um it goes back to we got to keep in mind, we we kind of started out um, behind the race. Behind the race, when I say race, I mean, like, um, in reference to like track. We started out meters behind the race. Um, the set, the thing about our, about our culture is that we don't have enough men, we don't have enough men to display how a man is supposed to act. And we don't have enough uh, females to teach how a woman is supposed to be or supposed to act or how you're supposed to foster the uh, emotions of a man. Um, we spend a lot of time going back and forth about and blaming each other for the things that uh, are not right with our uh, young men, per se. And instead of taking accountability, what I've seen is that if you say something about a black man, a black guy, because a man is going to understand that sometimes you make mistakes, but, you know, you can admit to being wrong. However, when we have a, a man who a guy who doesn't take responsibility for his actions and then you got a, a woman who's been taught that, hey, because I am a woman, I can hit you right. or I can talk to you any kind of way and you're not supposed to react. And that's just not true. Right. One of the things my mom used to say is you, if you're bold enough to hit a man, be bold enough to take that hit back. So yeah. I want to talk a little bit about some solutions because that can go into a whole nother conversation. But right. let's talk about some solutions with domestic violence before we wrap up the show. What are some okay. of the things that you feel like you, your company, of course, provides solutions? Tell us a little bit about those. I have, uh, what I've decided was um, we can't use violence to stop violence. 
Mm. We can't be violent. And when usually when you hear that some guy has uh, been domestically abusive towards a, a woman, yeah, you want to beat him up, fight him, send him to jail, shoot him, all that kind of stuff, right? So what I've decided was I had to look at both sides. I've been advocating for victims for a while as well. And so I decided I got to look at what's going on with the man, the guy in the situation, and what's going on with the, 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 the victim. However, I've decided that it, I can't, I don't want to re-traumatize the victim by constantly saying, okay, well, did you do this? Right. Or um, this is what you should look for. The victim is not the problem. It's the guy who's committing the uh, domestic abuse. So or the female who's committing the domestic abuse, yeah. I have uh, developed the Clinton Patent Project. The Clinton Patent Project is a project that um, covers the cost of mental health services or counseling for guys or uh, guys who have had uh, a felony or a uh, misdemeanor or just had a domestic violence call. You know, we provide counseling for those individuals because um, the only way that we're going to be able to, to stop this vicious cycle is we teach empathy to the perpetrator. And so that's a, it looks like it's a 12 week program. We have it up on the screen. So for our viewers, they can contact you. But it's a 12 week program that you highlight in your book about this program. Is that correct? The 12 week program is my um, principles of resilient youth development program. The program that I'm talking about is uh, the uh, psychotherapeutic abusive behavioral mediation. Okay. And it's on my website. OK. Um, I also have every Thursday at, at eight o'clock. I have a program that I, it's called Heart to Heart, where those guys who feel like they're going to be abusive at some point in time can call in and we can just talk it out. Oh, it's wow. A, it's a conference. That's awesome. I love that. So yeah, you're good. definitely doing your part to make sure that this domestic abuse, and I, I have to tell you that it's absolutely beautiful to hear your story of tragedy turning into something heroic. And so kudos to you for doing all of that. And viewers, if you guys are interested in finding out more about Mr. Patton, please tell us where we can find you. How can we reach out to you? Well, if you're looking for me, you're gonna find me. But you can, uh, you can go to my Facebook page. It's just my name, Clinton Patton. You can go to www.pattonbehavioralhealth.com um my website all the information is there um if i accept phone calls i'm human and i know <laughs> anytime i'm available oh well, we love I'm, it the end domestic violence um last but not least the vision that i see for this is i want to establish a um dormitory for let's say, for instance, if you get a, 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 a domestic violence call and they go to the house and they say, well, do you have somewhere to go? And nine times out of 10, they don't, right? Right, and they, right. They have, you know, so I wanted to, um, I'm also, also, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to get a, some type of dormitory slash apartment or something to where they have somewhere to go and they get counseling right then on the spot. Well, we love it. And guys if, and viewers, if you want to help donate to that mission, do you happen to have anywhere where they can reach out to you about that? It's the same. The My uh, Facebook page. Also, there's the uh, Clinton, Patton, Clinton Patton Project page on Facebook. I need to let me find the uh, the link. You can, just, I print, you can just type it in. It's a Clinton Patton Project. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Mr. Patton, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much for all of that information. And we hope that for our viewers and listeners that we've got an opportunity to have some conversation about domestic violence and what to do when those situations are happening. Of course, you can find me at Dr. Simone Ellis on Facebook and on Instagram. And of course, at my practice, Smile Design Studios in Missouri City, Texas. But please make sure you guys check out Docs, subscribe, make sure you um, review our content and give us also feedback so we can continue to give you guys shows that help to educate, empower, and inform you on things all health related. Mr. Patton, it was a pleasure again having you on the show. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in the future. And also, guys, think, make sure you check us out on Docs, okay? Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.